Girls can't play ball. They're not girthy enough for football. You throw like a girl. These are some common phrases girls across the country have heard constantly. And that is what I want to talk about today. Gender inequality in sports. Before I begin, I know what you're thinking. How can I talk about something that I don't understand? The one thing I can guarantee you though, is that we won't be like Burger King, who tweeted this out on Women's Day. Who the fuck was their PR manager? Tucker Carlson? Like, why was this even necessary? As a loyal customer who's gotten his order wrong so many times, I'm concerned. Do they really need this much attention? Sports mirror society. It not only tells us what's happening on in the world, as we saw in the summer, but it is something we all can understand the function of, as a majority of us do play sports. And some of us are elite players just like me. I hate my editing team. Regardless, I can't fully talk about this topic without addressing masculine counterarguments, such as the fact that there are skill level differences between the men's and women's league, or the fact that biological instances determine these different skill levels, right? How can women play in a sport such as football, for instance? So that is why we talked to Dr. Jen Welter, the first female coach in the NFL. And here is what she had to say about, say about this topic. I don't really understand why people would say, well, it's the physicality of this for guys versus girls that made the importance different, right? Like our significance isn't that men men are one way and women are another and therefore they should be in sport versus they shouldn't right we're talking about the best of the best of human spirit and you know if you have the best women in the world competing against the best women in the world that's not contingent to or in competition with whether or not the best on best for guys should compete against each other right so to me that that doesn't hold water like the WNBA is fantastic competition in and of itself. Dr. Welter made a very good point. Why do we value the dunk over the pass? Why do we have to compare men's sport to women when it comes to understanding their values? And if we want to talk about who is better or not, let's talk about the U.S. women's soccer team who have won four World Cups where the men have done jack shit. Yet that hasn't mattered because of the fact they aren't equally paid. Despite the fact that they have won all these World Cups, they have won more games, they have worked just as hard as men have, they still earn less, as we saw in the 2019 lawsuit. Imagine getting money for losing. I know, Desi parents, it doesn't make any sense. This concept is called the wage gap. It is the idea that women make less than men despite the fact that they work just as hard or more and have more or just as many accomplishments as them in the respect of the institution. So to determine that if this was actually a problem, we asked Dr. Jen Welter how much she made in her first time playing football. As a woman in football, the most I ever got paid for playing women's pro football was a dollar a game. And so if we talk about equal pay for equal work, that to me speaks very loudly. I know what you're thinking. She could have bought something at the dollar menu at Burger King. I know, it works perfectly. But all jokes aside, the wage gap is really real. But many of us actually don't understand it. Let's take a look at the WNBA and the NBA, for instance. Many people assume that the wage gap is Candace Parker asking the same amount of money as LeBron James does. In all reality, nobody can make as much money as LeBron James does. That man makes 100K per day. The amount of time I've been speaking right now, he's made $600. It's crazy, but that's not really the case. In the WNBA, for instance, women make up 22% of the total revenue, while in the NBA, 50% of the revenue goes to the players. That's a massive difference. This is about equality and equity. Oh, some of you may be thinking, oh, Raheem, but it's about the viewership and the revenue, you know, the market manlyhood argument. Then explain to me why did 99 out of the 144 WNBA players in 2018 end up going overseas to play in the offseason? Why is it the fact that in places like Russia and China, they earn three to six times more money than they do in the United States? 
Most of these players can't afford to spend their summers filming Space Jam. They have to constantly keep at work just to make a good amount of money. And yet, when we do offer women's coverage on, on sports networks, it's often in those dead times. It's often in the ESPN news and those backhand programs. In fact, 40% of sports people are women, yet only 4% of sports coverage goes to women's sports. That number is crazy. So how can we as a society say we prioritize women's sports when we all don't even see them? The market has been manipulated so that we don't even see women in sports so that, we, so that people can easily justify the gender wage gap, so that we can easily be able to defend when people say that they don't deserve enough money or they do not deserve enough credit. And that hurts us as a society. But more importantly, it hurts every little girl's dream who's trying to become a female athlete. Seven out of 10 girls, so half of girls will opt out of sports by the time they finish puberty. And when asked, um, and this was a part of the Keep Playing Like a Girl campaign that I authored some of the literature, when asked their reasons, seven out of 10 girls said they did not feel like they belonged in sports. Seven out of 10 said that society doesn't support them in sports. And seven out of 10 said there are not enough visible female role models in sports, okay? That means that we are not giving these girls the women that they need to see in order to have confidence that they can be. And we're also not showing them that it is as valuable to be a female athlete as it is to be a male athlete. How do we get more female athletes when we devalue it as a society? How can these little girls see that they can do it when journalists won't even report on female athlete success stories? How can they think that they're gonna be in these big sports companies when only 0.4% of girls get sponsorships? How can they think that they deserve their opportunities when 1.3 million more boys get sporting opportunities than girls. And 28% of high schools reported that there is a gender disparity when it comes to athletics. How is this even possible when we have so many obstacles in this cycle that is gender inequality in sports? This entire process either pushes down girls from even thinking about being female athletes, or when they do want to, doesn't give them the opportunity to do so. In all reality, our institutions and all of us need to understand that both sexes can be athletic and achieve these dreams equally. And we have to take out all the misconceptions that we have said in our society. Fuck the phrase, you catch like a girl. You either are given the resources to learn how to properly catch or you're not. Screw the idea that we have to use men's sport as a benchmark for the value of women's sports, appreciate its beauty as it is. And forget the idea that when our favorite male athletes have kids, they have to have a son so that they can continue on their legacy when their daughters can do just as the same. I'm sure Kobe would agree with this as well. Do you think your daughter might want to play in the WNBA? She does for sure. She does? Like, I, I don't, I mean, this, this kid, man. She's Wouldn't like, that be great? Dude, man, I, I'm telling you. The, be, the, best thing, the best thing that happens is when we go out and, and, and fans will come up to me and she'll be standing next to me and they'll be like, hey, you got to have a boy. You and V got to have a boy, man. You have somebody carry on the tradition, the legacy. She's like, oh, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, boy, for that, I got this. <laughs> like, that's right. Yes, you do. You got this. That's what this is about. Breaking the social constructs that we have as a society and treating everybody as a human with the similar traits and the similar ability to reach the same goal, regardless of their sex. And we should believe this because at the end of the day, we're all human. But I know there are going to be some people who my points pass through. And I ask you one simple question. What if your sister's dream was to be an athlete? and society rejected it? What if your wife was getting underpaid at her athletic job? What if people said your daughter couldn't continue your legacy? What would you say then?